we're getting to, to the end. So before the last session of, of, of coding, after like learning how to integrate Gem, which was an amazing session also for, for myself, I wanted to start um, just by mapping all of the things and the concepts that, that we've been discussing in these two days, because it can be sometimes uh, a little bit difficult to, to see the link between all of the different components and projects and teams. And so feel free, I know it's, it's sometimes it's messy the way that ecosystems in, in blockchain uh, get formed. Like obviously that's the beauty. Blockchains are, are like public spaces where people come for 10 different reasons and it needs to be still uh, like a, a good place for everybody. And, 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 and we all like that, but that messiness is sometimes is difficult to, to navigate. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be trying to, to talk about all of, all of the things that we've been talking with the idea of explaining where, where do they fit. And, and first, just to understand like how apps in general and, and, and the different models that we've been discussing. Like the first day, we talked a lot, a lot about SDKs. Normally, the, the SDKs, it, it doesn't matter if it's Python or, or JavaScript, uh, they, they were in, intended to, to just work with no architectural, uh, like, speci not specific architecture. Like, just the, the idea, for example, was that you could use, like, a Node app, which is running on, on your back end, and, 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 and you were obviously, in, in those examples, the first day, we were using like the, the private keys in your, in your backend, which is not at all what, what, what people uh, do in general in blockchain, because the whole point is that if the user has the keys and the security, the idea is that they're in control of that. So there's no, it makes no sense that why the private keys is in the backend. So I just, I, I just wanted to, to, to put emphasis on that. That, that even though like, it was the best way to explain how the, the, the SDKs work, it's in general not the architecture that it's intended for production, right? So normally, there are different philosophies on, on, on blockchain, right? If you are an exchange, which is the, 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 the way that sometimes we experience crypto, what's going to an exchange do, right? Like Bitstamp, they will not show you your, your private key. They will use the SDKs. You will see the, the, the Bitstamp front end. And basically, in their systems, they will use the libraries and they will like manage securely with their own security, but you need to trust them because they will be signing transactions for you in their backend. Right? So, this is with backend philosophy. So it's like saying users are not great in security, we're better. So this is the way that, it's, because sometimes people ask us why I, I, I know crypto, I'm an expert, I've been trading for years, I don't, I've never seen my private key. Well, <laughs> that's the reason. The, the, the other approach, which is less, let's say, um, authoritarian, <laughs> is like they, they let you hold the keys, but they control a lot of the logic in, in their servers, right? Which is what you saw with some. So basically they, they realize that it's very hard to use blockchains and they said like, well, how are we gonna emulate the way payments work? Normally I go with, with my PayPal and I request for a payment. You cannot do that in a blockchain, right? So they decided, let's, let's gonna build that logic in our system so people can use, and also there are no concept of an account in, in a blockchain, right? So a private key, I can have 10 private keys. The idea of some is thinking, how can I fill that gap where I can uniquely identify a client of, of a customer of an e-commerce platform and I can know, I can kind of like link one-to-one -to, -one to a unique identifier and then I can push a request. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna let a, any e-commerce app to build an app and to use my API to handle those, those situations so that it's easier to interact with them, right? To request a payment. So that's why if you go to the SOM API, you will see a lot of things that we, we didn't discuss, right? Because they added logic that they consider important. 
they still manage the signing of transactions in the mobile app. And that is because they consider that the best, uh, like most secure way in, in their view. So the signing on, uh, of the application will happen in your mobile device, or, and then it will travel to their servers, and ultimately they will send the signed transactions, including like, you know, so, so, some, some sort of, uh, they, they will still have information. Let's say like, it will leave a trace in their systems of, of what you did, right? Maybe, may, and, and, and also they are thinking, how can I add maybe uh, know your customer procedures. So th they, they're very aligned to, to, to how things work in, in, in the financial system and, and they want to fill the gap, right? So th this, is, this is kind of like the approach and, and, and I, I'm, I'm trying to, to give you uh, just a general view of, of why things look like that. And then there is like a, a more crypto or how it's known crypto, which is let's try to minimize as much as possible backend, right? So there is no, no one, no server will be interacting uh, unless like necessary, like in order to, 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 let's say to relay a transaction, but in general, like, like the whole vision, maybe the, how, how people sometimes experience blockchain is I go to my browser, uh, I, I, I will have uh, a key there that will be stored in a secure way so I can sign transactions, right? And, and, and then I will send the transactions as directly as possible without a system like being an intermediary. And, 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 and the reason is, is security, right? You allow like people to hold their keys and at the end of the day, just send like the transactions to, 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 the, to, to any blockchain. So this is, and this is, I think, applicable to any blockchain, but it's it, it just maybe not obvious for, for anyone. Sometimes we don't understand why, 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 why like the, the applications look like the way they are. So we have right now two browser wallets in the ecosystem, Gem Wallet, uh, Crossmark is one that it's, I think, I don't think it's public, but will be this year. And both are taking the approach of emulating what has worked uh, in, in, on Ethereum, which is like this MetaMask experience that in my, in my opinion is, is, is great. It's not maybe for the entire world, but it's, but it's a way to, to, to comply with the ethos of blockchain uh, with, with the current uh, status quo. Is there any question about like these systems? Maybe it's obvious for, for, for a lot of, of you, but I, I don't want it to assume. The other thing that we talked a lot about is what, what's ready and what's not. So yesterday we talked about how changes happen and, and in, in a system like, like there were a lot of questions about, about this process. So essentially XRP Labs, which is now called Chaman, is, 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 is actually uh, very prolific in the ecosystem. They have developed a vision of, of how smart contracts uh, can work, compatible with, with, with the system, how it is, and that's what hoax is. And this, this graph was referring to that proposal. They, they, were, they, they have been pushing for XRPL to adopt that at, at, the main, at the main chain level. The reality is that today there is no like a date where, where, where that will happen, right? So it's a plan, it's still, a a valid plan that, that one day uh, in, in the future hooks will be part of the system. But, but because of this process and, and, and having everyone to agree on, on, a, on a change, so this, this is not ready, but that doesn't mean that hooks cannot be tried. So as, as, as they told us, hooks is a system that it's, it has been built, but it's not live on, on, on mainnet. And it's, it's one, of, 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 of the groups that are today contributing uh, proposals for core features of, of the ledger. So their plan, and I'm gonna tell you uh, like a little bit of how, how it's been working. So essentially, 
we have the, the, the main chain and the idea is hooks to, to work at, at, at the chain, at the main chain level, but what, what, what they're also proposing, because they, they've been running a DevNet, which is just a replica of the main chain, but with their custom features. And, and it's been running, it's, 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 it's a testnet, it's, it's called the Hooks DevNet, so you can try Hooks there. They're planning to release a public version of that, right? And, and that to act as a sidechain, meaning that it's, it's gonna be a replica, but it's gonna be a replica with extended features. And, 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 and what I wanted to, to talk about here is, this is one of the visions of why sidechains are important. Sometimes some changes are so drastic and so disruptive that you don't want to take the risk to just implement them because sometimes you don't know how, how code will affect like the existing features. It's really hard to, to see what are gonna be the outcomes and the results of, of, of adding new features. And even if, so they, I, I asked some engineers, why, why is taking so much time, um, like some C++ engineers, and, and, and I went and said like, why, why wouldn't we like spend more time looking at it? And, 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 and the best explanation I got is like, yeah, imagine like someone comes to a, a village and, and, and say like, without any electric, any, any electric um, power, and say like, oh, do you want power in, in, in your backyard? Yes, of course. And then, okay, I have this reactor that I, that I wanna try. This is like an atomic reactor. So let me install it. Wait, wait, wait. You're not gonna install that on, on, my, on my backyard. So in a way, we want that feature. Everybody wants that. It's just taking time to, to, to analyze it in, in, in the proper way. And, and on the side, the idea is not, that not only sidechains with a replica of, of, of the base code will, will exist in, in, in a world where of multiple chains. The idea is that other stacks should be as good as not everything will be a replica right, of, 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 of your code base. So this has to do a lot with interoperability. The other goal of sidechains is not to try like things in an experimental way, but also to be interoperable with things that have worked in other ecosystems, right? And one example of that, it's the project that uh, Florent is, is gonna demonstrate how, how, how you can interact with it, but it's basically what it's called today an EVM sidechain. And the EVM sidechain will also be connected through bridges to, to the main net, but it uses a different stack. So it's not a replica like, like, like the Hooks uh, main that they're planning to, to launch. This, this is built on Cosmos SDK, which is like this project open source that uh, lets you to launch, a, it's like a, let's say, uh, Ruby, Ruby on Rails, it's like a Rails for, for blockchain where you can out of the box uh, get a software and it has the, the, the modules that are needed to, to run your, your blockchain. It has like a module that it's a consensus and, and, and things like that. And, and in that ecosystem, people also have built modules to make it compatible uh, with, with, with ABM, the, the Ethereum virtual machine. So that means that you can have a runtime for apps that uh, you can build, you can write on Solidity and they will compile and they will run as an application. And this is important because either we want it or not, like Solidity developers are all over the place. It's today, like they, they, they were there, uh, like with more like at the first move advantage and, 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 and they, they are builders. So the idea of, of, of doing that, it's just a path to be compatible with, with, with that world of, of very good developers that, that we think are important in, in, in an ecosystem right, in, in, in the best possible way. And the idea of like not making the main chain like just EVM compatible, like it, there's a reason, right? So the, the whole point in the very beginning of XRPL was to not have heavy computation happening on, on the layer one. 
because at the end of the day you have a, a network of nodes that they will be running the computation so the more you add to, to the plate of those the more it will cost to, to run the validators so the point is to have a main chain with guarantee uh, very very inexpensive transactions but also don't lose the opportunity to be interoperable with apps that have that, that composability that, that people like uh, in, the, in, the, in the Ethereum virtual machine world. So, and, and, and also another thing just to keep in mind, and I'm, I'm not trying to convince you this is the best model, but it's arguably not a bad one because a lot of blockchain projects have focused on programmability and if, if they're not Ethereum it's, and, and you cannot attract a mass, uh, massive number of developers, like it, programmability will not make your blockchain to, to accrue value. Like value accrual, it's not directly proportional to, to how programmable your blockchain is, right? It's, it's about real people. So that's, so what the idea is how can you have the best of both worlds? How can you have programmability? Well, one, one way to do it is this vision in which you delegate uh, all that complexity in computation to the sides. And at the end of the day, you end up with a linear uh, blockchain where the assets live. Because at the end of the day, what, where value accrues is where the assets live. Like a proof of that, maybe it's a, it's a Bitcoin. Like it's not programmable, it has a very, very simple script. Um, so it's, no one can really build a, a lot of things and still is number one the last time, last time I checked, right? So it's something you're, for you to think about and for yourself. So what connects these this, this different systems? And well, today that is also in the making. This is a proposal made by Ripple uh, yesterday I talked about this foundation GitHub that allows anyone to, to make proposals. So one of them has been a bridge. This bridge, XLS38D, you can see all of the discussions. There are pros and cons, the way it works. The, the, the idea of, of, of this is, is, is not to explain in full because this is not, let's say, it's, it's not like clear right now that that's going to be the ultimate design. But I want, I want to give you an overview of, of what the proposal is. So basically, what it's saying and proposing is to delegating to a third party group more nodes to act as a witness, as a group of witnesses that they will get paid in order to monitor the two chains. So that's, that's, that's what the concept is. So these witnesses what they will do is imagine like they will be monitoring like, like, like the two chains and the, the proposal includes uh, changes specifically uh, on XRPL where there's, there are new transactions that allow anyone to create a DOR account and the DOR account you know, it will allow to, to, to put some assets in the DOR account and then they will monitor that, 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 that the assets are locked in such account and then they will say okay we attest that actually the assets and th then that can trigger the issuance of the tokens here and the other way around right so it's essentially a group a multi-seed that have the power while it's the downside these people can collude right because what 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 someone creating one of these bridges what they're doing is that they're stipulating who the group is right it's, 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 it's a transaction called uh, set list. And by setting this list, basically you're delegating the power of, they will be collectively sharing the power uh, for, for the transactions, right? So it has downsides, but at the end of the day, it's, it, it's a viable way today to, to, to make that, that bridge. Today, there are other proposals that, that, that are at the same time being thought, discussed, designed. There's a white paper that will uh, probably be released soon by XRPL Labs, talking about a potential uh, new approach for a bridge. So it's not finalized, it's an ongoing discussion. And, um, and well, I mean, this, this incentivization of a third party, it, it's happening in other chains, so at, at the staters, witnesses. Uh, so th th that, this model is, is not new, 
it's, it's kind of inspired by, by, by those other, other models. But, uh, you know, bridges are tricky and it's something that will actually be slow. But the good thing is that you can have these independent chains evolving, right? So the whole point that we were discussing is that you will, today, this year, people will be building, you will see, I mean, you people today can build apps using Solidity that they will run on a, on a side chain that eventually will, will have a very robust bridge, right? Either with this proposal or with other one. And so we're not stopping that ecosystem to emerge and grow and flourish, but uh, we're, we're building the, the, the plane on the flight, all the ecosystem. So today, what Jake mentioned a little bit how, how it looks to also have other sort of apps where he, he says each app is kind of like a blockchain. It has a very different model. It has a dependency on hooks. That's why today his idea is that it will live in this, this uh, like main chain with hooks that it's planned to launch soon uh, by XRP Labs, connected through a bridge, probably their version of the bridge to the XRP ledger. And there will be this group Evernote that will be focusing on applications with their own approach that will be popping up, leveraging that. And then find that there will be, for example, a way for XRP, obviously, to, to become usable and find utility either here and there. But the good thing about this is that these are very two different approaches where, where you will be able to get programmability, and, and, and try different things, utility, and at the end of the day, kind of like maintain uh, like the, the lean aspect of, of the ledger, which today it, it's not very maybe well accepted that today maybe people think that Ethereum won in every sense. And I think what I would say is early to know. And I think there is a case to, to be made that to have all this computation and this massive state growing the way that Ethereum is, is, is thinking and then to have layers and layers on top every single thing anchoring to, to the main chain in a, in a very like vertical way it's it's maybe not not a best approach versus sometimes a more horizontal approach which is like this idea of more like a speci specialization of, of change which is the thesis of the app chain thesis so this is more aligned to the to the app chain thesis in in general so uh, I wanted to provide just this overview, very conceptual, but, but just to try to mention all of the different concepts in just a single slide, I think sometimes it's, it's helpful. So with that, I, I finished this thing. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to. On Cosmo, it was very unstable. Uh, uh, did it improve a, a little bit? It's really difficult, I agree. And um, I don't know which one you try, but at least I've seen two different projects. FMOS is one of them. And right now there's a, like at least two others that are working on, on different like compatibilities of, of setting up a virtual machine on top of, of, of the Cosmos SDK, right? And, 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 and we, not we, but like the, the team building uh, that EVM sidechain that's called Pierces is very aware of that. It's, it's been like a lot of discussions because it's not easy, right? So there are a lot of changes that need to be made in order for this to work. That's why there are some advocates saying that maybe the EVM sidechain is, 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 is a terrible idea, but there's like this other alternative that is custom Wasm that uses like Wasm. But the, but the reality at the end of the day is like in, at the engineering level, there are better options. So this is more about how do we serve an existing community of Solidity developers? So I, I don't think this decision is sometimes... So I, in the internet, there were better designs than the one we have. Just at the end of the day is, 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 is to balance that out. And, and today it's hard to say, but I think you, you're bringing a, a great point that it's, it's, not, it's, it's not an easy thing. But, but in reality, the, the, I respect a lot like the Cosmos ecosystem. There, there's a lot of learnings from the past and all, all the experiments that are multiple chains running different uh, versions of, 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 of trying new things. And, and, and it's very, very nice, I think, to, to have a foot in that ecosystem as well and learn from, from the mistakes. 
Yeah, so I uh, also have a question. Uh, why did uh, you make the choice to use uh, Cosmos SDK and not uh, Polkadot SDK substrate? Yeah. Well, I mean, my understand. I, I know very little about um, Polkadot, but in general, like I think the concept of a bar chain is that they do have like this shared security with with anchoring like to to the to the main chain, right? And that fixes you to to that ecosystem, and also like you have to pay rent. <laughs> Versus this model, you don't have to pay rent. And this one also has other problems because in the bar chain world, the problem is that you have to pay rent but you have sh shared security. In, in, in the Cosmos world, you don't have the shared security. That means that you, you have to, to deal with your, own, with your own security problems, but you have independence and, 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 you, and you don't have to forever pay, which is this vertical model that I talk about on Ethereum. On Ethereum, every rollup on Ethereum will, at the end of the day, be paying like fees on way, on, on ETH. Right, and, 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 and basically that, that is what, what makes it vertical. The, the whole point, I think, in using Cosmos SDK is the vision of, of independence. At the end of the day, you can throw away whatever you want and, and, and bring your own things, and you will not pay for that. And one, 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 one thing to think about is that you are not building, if, if, if that is a side chain, that doesn't have to be the, the most secure. Obviously, yeah, it needs to be secure, but security is for levels. Maybe you don't want the top. What you, what you want to trade a little bit is maybe that's, if you're moving XRP, the idea is there will always be a trade-off. So the trade will, will be, I want more utility. I want to trade it for security. So it's kind of like the, the and, and, and I don't think realistically that it's going to be happening everywhere. Like if you are, you know, trading an a in an AMM Bitcoin, that's the same thing. You're getting utility that is, 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 it's given to you by, by this AMM, but there's going to be a, a chain of trust in which someone is wrapping the Bitcoin, maybe probably in a centralized way. So this is the same. The idea is how do we build that chain of trust, like minimizing those problems. But, uh, but I think that that was the reason versus like the, the parachain world, although the thing with parachains in, in Polkadot, and also, is, is that, I mean, the interoperability, it's great, right? But the problem is when, when you go outside of the, of the Polkadot, then, then you have the same interoperability problems. Uh, and the same thing happens in, in Cosmos, like there's this like IBC world where, where, where you have a way, a protocol to connect and, and to breach, I mean, messages, not, not only assets, but in a way, like, it's, it's pretty much People have built IBC connections outside of the Cosmos world, but it's complicated, right? Because what you're doing is you are basically having like light clients that are checking consensus of the other chain. And it's great, but, 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 but you, it, it's complex and you also will need relayers. So in a way, I, I haven't seen a perfect solution, but, uh, but, but I think the point of having this vision and multiple approaches at the same time uh, being competitors among each other, it's probably one of the best scenarios that you want to see because you, you, you're trying to see competition versus like a world where oh, everything's perfect, but outside we don't care. So I think the thing to, to realize here is that I think we should all think about how do we interact with, with the outside world and that, that's like the, that side. And also, how do we grow in, in the best way, like the approach it has? And, and we don't know, maybe probably in five years, one of them will be very small compared to the other in terms of, of total value locked. But today, it's kind of like too early to know. Yeah, maybe one question about the, the drawbacks and advantages of uh, the right and the left side. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, just like a recap. Very... It's, it's about um, wh what do you think a blockchain is for, right? Ethereum thinks that a blockchain is like a, a global computer, right? That everyone should have access to. So if you think blockchain is important because you need a global state where you can store data and then everyone can have access to that data. For example, like uh, think of like ENS, right? Like a, a name service. 
where everyone is, is using that as, as, as a shared infrastructure for everyone to, to, to store like a handle. Um, well, I mean, you cannot do that in other chains, right? Like in, in Bitcoin. Bitcoin, the approach, and, and I'm using Bitcoin because that, that's extreme. I would say like, this is not extreme. Extreme is, is Bitcoin, the, the vision is blockchains are just good for money, right? It's, it's, it's not about like, uh, being a computer, it's more like how do you minimize the surface of security? So I would say this model is not have the computations. Like actually, before Ethereum, people were discussing like smart contracts, like running uh, the, the way that they were doing, and people, including XRPL, decided not to to include those. At the time, probably people were were thinking about this smart contract more as a stored procedures. Right? Stored procedures already, already existed in, in, in databases. So what it, what it is, it's just adding logic to your database. Right? And, and the problem with, with stored procedures that are great, because you have database plus a little bit of logic for the data that it's stored there, is that it adds some potential problems. Right? So here is like, what, what is the trade-off? Ethereum went for all in. It's like, okay, let's have problems. Let's have problems, let, let's have computation. And, and, and I don't think it's bad. it was a bad bet. Like, in a way, they feel a need, which is like, how do I make the most programmable blockchain? And obviously, like, the result of that is, is a bunch of developers. Um, the problem is that I, I, I would argue that it's, it, it's not the, 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 the leanest and the, and the most secure way to do it. So I think the, the vision here is to maintain that lean, asset like focus plus like the features that are more valid more, more cautious saying okay maybe some of the things in that world full of experimentation will work let's adapt them once they're proven right once like the utility is kind of proven which is like okay amm was an experiment made on on the evm world amms were an amazing uh, innovation because when you have like the delay that happens on blockchains the, the automated market making, uh, what Uniswap invented, is like, okay, this is a great model to trade uh, when you have slow systems. So right now, <laughs> it's already proposed and it's in, in, in the process of getting merged a functionality that combines the central limit order book that today XRPL has with the uh, AMM, right? And why? Because it's a great innovation. So kind of like you're trading, maybe you're not the place where experimentation happens, but you're the place that are ready to have a, a, a group of people that reliably will uh, make the decision and eventually merge new, new solutions uh, to your system for the benefit of the, of the members. Um, would we have like a list of use cases uh, that would be, uh, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think, they, they, yeah, I think these in general are more limited. For example, like hooks is, 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 is people were asking because they're not expressive, right? So people, you think a hook can actually just alter like the flow of, uh, of a payment. So something can happen before a payment is received or a payment is triggered by an account. So basically it's, it's a little bit of logic that will affect an account. That is very different, right? A piece of logic that only affects an account is very different, which is what a hook is, is very different from a program, right, that owns an account and has a bunch of logic, right? Maybe some of you already are part of it. People with a lot of um, intelligence and willingness to help are there. XRPLDevs.com will take you to, to the Discord. We have an amazing community leader, manager, Bias Goose, who is uh, going to be the first welcoming uh, every one of you. And all of us are there. And the other thing, uh, obviously, like, we want to invite you to our hackathon. Like, you know, the, all the knowledge, all of the time you're investing, it's, it's highly appreciated. And that commitment is obviously needs to be rewarded. The way that we think about rewarding commitment, it's like, first, like, we put hackathons as, as many as we can out there for, for, for people who want to experiment with ideas. So right now there, there's one 
uh, running, there's $60,000 in prices. There's a little bit like 40 days left, so there's time to prototype something. The level, it's, it's not hard. You can, something that you built with the amazing tools that uh, Florent showed us, I think it's good enough as a start. And then after that, uh, the team I work with also manages things like go a little bit, I mean, require a little bit more commitment, like, okay, I want to build something further. Then it comes grants, it comes uh, an accelerator, it comes uh, multiple things. So we, we would love to see you uh, in, in, in the ecosystem and, and, and thanks in general for the time, for the interest and, and, and yeah, for being here. Thank you so much.